Hello, I'm Dr. Holly Lofton. I'm an obesity medicine specialist at NYU Langone Health in Manhattan. And today I have a special guest, Dr. Marina Kurian, who is a clinical professor of surgery at NYU Langone Health and the president of the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery. Welcome, Dr. Kurian. Thank you so much for having me, Holly. Thank you. Today, I wanted to discuss a very hot topic, which is the combined use of bariatric surgery and anti-obesity medications, because we know there's so many different modalities that are being used to treat overweight and obesity right now. Those include lifestyle interventions, anti-obesity medications, and bariatric metabolic surgery. However, some patients need multiple modalities to achieve success. So I want to ask you first, what are some of the more common metabolic bariatric surgeries that are performed today? So I'd say the two most common currently uh, in the U.S. is the sleeve gastrectomy and the roux y gastric bypass. And in the sleeve gastrectomy, we do remove a portion of the stomach, whereas in the gastric bypass, we make the stomach small and then reroute the intestines, and so we don't actually remove uh, any, any stomach in that procedure. So with the sleeve uh, gastrectomy, we expect patients to lose about um, 30 to 35 percent of total body weight. And with the bypass, it can be slightly more. So it can be maybe 35 to 40 percent of total body weight. Now, have you seen patients who don't achieve this expected weight loss? Absolutely. And when that occurs, um, something that we both do in our practice is, is I will add um, anti-obesity medication to that regimen. But first, of course, I look to see what type of diet they're on, you know, what their uh, caloric intake is, what's, what is their level of activity before I just say, hey, take this uh, medication. So what would you say are the potential benefits of using anti-obesity medications after bariatric surgery versus, say, a revisional surgery or a second metabolic bariatric surgery? So I think think it's a complex answer. And um, some of the benefits obviously are if the medication can get the patient to their goal, then we're saving them an operation. And so I frequently do this with my patients first to see if they really would benefit from a revision. Um, and so I'll start them on medication after their initial bariatric surgery to see how well they do with dietary modification and behavioral modification, and then I add the medication as well. And then if they lose enough, then they don't need um, a bariatric revision. But if they don't lose, or there's some other reason, like sometimes it's about access to the medications, then I will consider them for a revisional procedure, depending on what their initial operation was, of course. Is there scientific evidence that anti-obesity medications are better for patients after bariatric surgery than, say, just seeing a dietitian to get more results? Absolutely. Um, as you know, and I believe you've written some of that literature, there's plenty of articles out there that look at uh, the use of anti-obesity medications versus lifestyle and dietary uh, changes. And the anti-obesity medication along with that will really have the maximum results for patients. And this is if they have weight recurrence after the initial procedure or if they have inadequate weight loss and are not following the trajectory that I usually feel that they should be on based on my experience with so many patients. That's a really good point you brought up and I want to talk more about that for the audience. If you're a primary care physician and you're seeing someone for previous bariatric surgery, even if it was five, ten years ago, a very common practice was to refer them to a dietitian, have them log and track calories and things like that. But if the evidence is stating that they may be better um, managed by either seeing their bariatric surgeon for medication or revisional options or seeing an obesity medicine specialist or even a primary care doctor prescribing medications, if the evidence is there, then that may change some of the current practices and help our patients get more success. I think that's absolutely true. I think if you look at the landscape of uh, obesity treatments that are out there, um, since we've had so many medications added to our arsenal, 
I know that many of our colleagues around the country are getting more familiar with using them in patients. I think the key to it is to try and identify who would benefit. And I think it is completely appropriate for the patient to be evaluated for the use of anti-obesity medication, even if they've had surgery. Yes, so you primary care doctors can also prescribe anti-obesity medications to your patients. There are so many patients with obesity with or without bariatric surgery who can benefit from these. So I hope we'll leave you with that message. Are there specific medications which have been proven to be better for post-bariatric surgery patients as far as weight regain? So yeah, there have been uh, several studies looking at this and First, I'd say that after bariatric surgery, because there's a metabolic component to what we do in terms of different hormone levels that are uh, changed in the body, when we add a medication, we're actually seeing some synergy with the surgery. So I think that my post-op patients will actually lose more weight than if they never had the bariatric surgery itself. So with that synergy, we are always... Um, looking at what medications might benefit the patient. And some of them can't be on a, uh, a GLP-1 receptor agonist. Maybe they've had a history of pancreatitis um, or they can't be on fentramine products because they have uh, some heart disease. And so because of that, it does tailor what medications I'll put patients on. And I know there have been several studies out there looking at GLP-1 receptor agonists as well as looking at uh, fentramine and fentramine um, combination like fentramine and topiramate that have shown benefit. So it's hard to say, I haven't seen a study yet, maybe, maybe you have, of um, someone using GLP-1 receptor agonists in one group versus another group getting a fentramine type product. That's really helpful. Let me backtrack for a second and ask you this. Do you expect some weight regain in all patients after they reach the lowest point after metabolic bariatric surgery? And I want to ask you, if so, how much weight regain or weight recurrence is too much? You, you got all the complicated questions today. So yes, uh, patients can have some weight recurrence, but but is it weight recurrence or is it just they bounce up from their nadir weight, right? So we always talk about a trajectory. The patient starts out here and then they drop down to a low point and then bounce up a little bit. And that's expected after a procedure. So the question of how much is that bounce back too much is complicated because it, it will always be too much for the patient. Does it cause a recurrence of or a worsening of their comorbid conditions is also important to know. And that can actually guide future therapy, right? If their type 2 diabetes comes back, then we have uh, the ability to use a GLP-1 receptor agonist uh, for that patient. If the weight loss is 10, 15 pounds, then we might try other strategies. Uh, I would say that at least um, 10 to 30% of patients will have some weight recurrence after they reach their nadir weight. And then the idea is, when do you treat them? And that's actually a separate article. Uh, there's been several out there that looked at this um, potential for weight recurrence, and they say that the, the key to treatment and to maximize treatment and improve the patient's overall result is actually to treat at weight loss plateau, so maybe it's at nine months or a year, versus treating when the patient has already started with their weight recurrence. So those are really good clinical pearls for our audience. And I just want to restate some of those. So when the patients have the lowest weight they've achieved after bariatric surgery, that's the nadir weight. And there's a number that they may see at home that we don't see in the office that they may want to get back to, but it's very hard to achieve again after the surgery. However, some weight regained 10, 15 pounds may be expected, but if something environmentally or with their health changes, if they become immobilized or have an injury, and we start to see weight regain beyond their previous plateau, uh, that may be the time to start medications. But you're saying to, it's best to start medications when they're plateau and you achieve more success rather than starting it after they regain a significant amount of weight? That's correct. And I think 
the the paradigm is changing. Our surgeries used to get patients down from a BMI over 40 to a BMI between like 28 to 32. And if their BMI was over 50, we'd be getting these patients down on average to a BMI between 34 and 38. But now with medications, with that combination, we can actually have that paradigm shift where we're treating patients for their severe obesity and actually getting them routinely down into the overweight and sometimes into the normal BMI range, like 25 or less. And we both have several patients that, that we've achieved that with. So it is possible, and it's really dramatically different from what you can do with anti-obesity medication alone or surgery alone, but comp combining them is so powerful. Well, it looks like we have some exciting new developments in combining therapies that our audience can start to do on their own or refer if they feel more comfortable. And there are others in the pipeline that can help our bariatric surgery patients maintain the weight loss that they achieved after surgery, improve their weight loss outcomes, and keep the medical conditions that have been ameliorated at bay. So this is a really exciting time for the field. It absolutely is. And it's, it's you know, it's good. Um, it's not exclusive. This is really, you know, treatments that are going to be uh, inclusive and, and uh, synergistic. And we shouldn't be looking at it as surgery or medicine, but really combination. I also think that we have to look at obesity like we do many other diseases where you sometimes need to do more than one therapy. And it's many times multimodal therapy. So it is uh, important, I think, for all of our uh, listeners and our colleagues to really understand that, you know, as a surgeon, I got my ABOM so that I could actually, you know, help uh, medicate my postoperative patients. And, you know, it wasn't like I'm going to reoperate on every patient. I think it's important to know that there are medications out there, much like we do with heart disease. We start patients on, you know, um, medications, and then sometimes they need stents, sometimes they need bypass. So we have to add those um, other modalities when we see someone who has uh, stubborn obesity. Yes, I didn't mention that in your credentials. Dr. Curian is also board certified in obesity medicine. She wears many hats. So thank you so much for your time. Anything else you want to share with our audience today? No, thank you so much for listening. And I think, you know, don't be afraid of the obesity, uh, of the anti-obesity medications. And if you have an interest in taking care of these patients, absolutely do so. I know that our obesity medicine colleagues have wait lists of six months. So you really should think about, um, you know, getting the knowledge, going to uh, different courses like the Blackburn course is a great one. Um, TOS has a course as well. So I think going to these different courses, um, and as well, o OMA, OMA uh, also has a, as courses, will help you really um, help your patients. And, and they, all, they are all now really excited about getting treatment. And unfortunately, access has been an issue because everybody can't get seen in a timely manner. Thank you, Dr. Kurian, for your time. And audience, we hope you've enjoyed this discussion of using anti-obesity medications after metabolic bariatric surgery. Thank you so much, Dr. Lofton.